about um, how we utilized A-B testing in a MOOC environment to improve the learning experience. And um, the organi organization where I come from is the hassel Platten Institute. It's a small uh, computer science institute with about 500 uh, students, but we also provide a large online learning environment where we provide MOOCs with much more uh, students like that. Um, this is a ship from ancient times where rooms what we looked like this room today. And um, one of the major issues of this uh, ship travel was that on the ships which departed in northern Europe and went, for example, to uh, America, a lot of the people suffered from different illnesses and got sick. So it was very dangerous for the, for the people on board, for the uh, shipmen, to do such a travel. And some smart guy, um, he figured out that on the ships which traveled from Southern U Europe to uh, the States, that the, the people don't get so sick. So um, there was no scoboot, actually, that was one of the major issues on, on that ships. And then she looked, he looked at what are the difference between, uh, or it's like the people, or, and he figured out there's um, different food. <coughs> the ships which departed in Southern Europe had citrus fruits. The ships from, I don't know, England um, hadn't. They had I don't know, beans and uh, toast or something. Um, and he, so he, he made an experiment. He uh, took two ships and um, his assumption was there should be some influence on, on this citrus fruit thing, kind of we thinking about if we're dealing with MOOCs today. Um, so he gave this one ship uh, citrus fruits and the other ships just stayed with their normal uh, food that we used to. And then he when the ship arrived, he looked how was the conditions of the uh, sailor man, and he found out, okay, obviously, uh, on, on the one ship without citrus fruit, uh, skaboot, and people were sick. On the citrus fruit ship, everyone was fine and having a good time. Um, and so A-B testing uh, was born. Um, in the late 90s, there was one developer at Amazon, and he had an idea of a nice algorithm. So he was kind of data-driven, also something which we see uh, here at Luck from time to time. Um, and he thought it might be a nice idea to present users uh, items that have been bought by other users. So you're very familiar with those features if you use Amazon today. And he went to his um, bosses and he suggested to implement that feature. And um, the, the, the management board was really skeptical and said, no way, we're not going to do that. This going to like confuse users and we don't want to like use that data. But he was really like convinced of, his, of this idea. And so without telling his bosses, he implemented the feature and he rolled it out in a controlled test. Um, actually, the management was part of the test group. At least they noticed that there, this feature is online and they were really angry, um, but the uh, test could show that there was a high influence on the purchasing behavior. So those users who had this additional information during checkout bought much more, and so there was no way for the management other than to uh, say, okay, that actually was a good idea, and we're going to follow this path. So you get an idea of the basic um, A-B testing concept. You have two or more groups, you present a different version of the page, then you collect the matrix, and in the end, you're gonna look at the matrix and you're gonna do some decision making. Um, this is very popular in, in e-commerce, for example, I uh, worked in, in e-commerce for quite a, a decade, and when we rolled out um, online advertisement banners, we always did that, so we rolled out like five or six versions um, and the, the thing that we can learn from there is we were sometimes we were able, based on our experience, to like say, okay, this could be the version that's going to click best. And it's very easy, easy metric because it displayed and you can measure is it clicked or not. Uh, but some of, of the uh, results, we even we or our customer wasn't able to forecast. Give, let, let's give me some information about the context where we use um, this or we um, research this. Uh, this is OpenHPI, uh, this is our MOOC platform, it provides courses in English and German. Uh, it has a dual stream video here, this is the questions, um, and it's a traditional XMOOC platform. So courses from, six to, from four to six weeks um, with topics from 
um, IT, reaching out for people who are working lifelong learning is, is the overall context. We also did some of the tests on our platform OpenSAP. This is an enterprise MOOC offer run by SAP um, where they have more courses. You can see there are currently six courses ongoing. So we also have a larger amount of enrollments and users, which is good for doing A-B testing because you need a critical mass. Uh, there we have 1.2 million enrollments since we started this project. The underlying architecture of this software and the software we um, built ourselves is its service oriented architecture. And that means that we don't have a monolithic application, but we do have several services that communicate which is other, which is other and with a front end through REST and, and messaging. What's the big drawback of this architecture is that every service has an own data storage. So the account information is stored in one database, the course information is stored in one database, the uh, pinboard information is in another database. So that makes this really difficult to have a single point of truth where we can like collect metrics. So the first thing we had to do is we had to implement an own service that worked as a single point of truth. So every action of a user is pushed to the analytics service where we do some processing um, and we use different data storages. So the same data is um, put into a Postgres, into Elasticsearch, and into a Neo4j database that's a craft database. And so we can utilize the features of each database where it's best. So we're just doing like aggregations. We could use uh, Elasticsearch. If we want to do something with relations, we use Postgres. If we do something like find me the friend of the friend of the friend of the user, we can probably use the craft database. And uh, all the data can be queried by this uh, REST API. This is how the events uh, look like that we store. Uh, that's very XAPI-like. So for example, here's a user identified by his UUID. He asks a question with a title and a text on a certain time in a certain context. So that's quite normal. This is stored um, just like this in, in, in the Elasticsearch, also in the Postgres. And from there, um, we can easily extract metrics out of this data. And uh, we started with the first eight metrics. That's the uh, pinboard posting activity, so active contributions in the social forum, the passive, act, uh, passive contribution in the forum, so reading posts. Uh, then we also came up with some combined metrics. For example, there we say, um, Posting or active contribution in the forum, we rate this higher than just reading, but we still want to have one easy to read um, metric. And the question response time is the time after you post a question, how long to the first answer. A visit count is, a video visit count is just like um, using the normal course material. And we also have the course activity that's um, combining the social part of the platform and the learning material part and the course points. So this is when you, uh, that's a crate basically. Um, and just recently um, I added three more metrics the session, session duration, average se session duration and the total s session duration. This is something you could imagine that it's harder to calculate. Um, so this is just like not counting events. There we have to do some, uh, implemented some logic in the analytics layer. Um, if you think about using MOOC A-B testing in a large scale learning environment, there are some things that are different in opposite to um, if you use it in e-commerce. Um, and so let me highlight the life cycle that we see in a typical A-B test. <coughs> the first thing um, we did is we allow to filter the selection. So who's going to be part of the A-B test? Um, we implemented some filters on demographic, age, um, stuff like that. What we usually use in the tests we've done so far is the count of enrollments. So many of the tests we just want to use with, feature, with users who are enrolling to the first course. So to keep like distraction minimal um, if they are familiar with some of the features. Uh, next thing is there are two phases. You have the start of the test. That's where the users actually put into the test or the control group. 
but at this moment you not want to start calculating the matrix. Um, because one of the examples I'm going to show you, there will be an influence of the visit metric. So um, we start the test, but then there will be a dedicated finish of the test. That's where we start the metric. And then some time will pass. We have some metrics which are be calculated on the fly. For most of the metrics, we want to wait a, a, a certain amount of time, um, a few weeks normally, or at least one week. Next question we had to ask ourselves is where do we want to start? So we, we know um, we're not going to deal with content. There have been some research or, uh, where we tried different content or where people tried different content blogs. Um, and to be honest, um, producing the content for our MOOCs is uh, qu quite a bottleneck. It takes a lot of time. Where we're good at is we can change the way the platform works and looks and how the, the content is pushed to the user. So that's where we look at. And then to find out what are the areas where you can hope for the best results, we just did a survey and we asked about the user satisfaction in different parts of the software. And what we found out is um, we asked about onboarding, we asked about social learning and and what we found out here, this is the low results. This is the experience in the social learning part of the firm. So this was one part where obviously there's room for improvement, at least in the perception by the users. And I'm going to present you the first three um, tests we've done on our platform, both to evaluate the, the architecture and the usage of A-B testing in MOOCs in general, but also to gain some insights from this specific um, use cases. The first thing we tested is, could we improve the onboarding experience? So as soon as you're addressing a large amount of users, as you do in MOOCs, and we also have some courses which are addressing like tech newbies, um, you have to do some explanation to them to make them familiar with, with the platform. And so we did this inline tour where the user is explained, like this is the navigation, this is the item navigation, there is the forum. And this is also the test where um, while you do the, the tour, you would create additional visits. So you would change the metric. So that's where um, the, the count of the metrics would only start after he quit the tour or finished the tour. And this is like the results look like. We look at two metrics here. This is um, the visit count. And this is the pinboard um, activity. Uh, one of our assumptions was that people just don't understand that there's additional tab with the forum. And you could see like there's a very low amount of, of users. We did this only on one platform. Um, we can see some change, but it's not significant. It's like a very level, low level of, of confidence. So we get an idea here. This might be something where we want to continue and do additional tests um, later. Um, one thing we thought that it might be very interesting um, also to build trust is that we don't take all the data and in the end of the day then export the data and process it in some tool, but some have some really like real-time um, view um, of, of the results. This can then be used, for example, to add additional metrics, to let more user into the test, also, maybe if you see that the results are really like not satisfactory, to stop a test very early on, if you could see that there's some, I don't know, negative impact. The second test was about getting users who are not within the course back to the course. And so the simple idea here is we send out a mail to the user and then say, hey, you've not been there in the course for four days. Why, why don't you come, come back? And we've done this in, uh, here you can see the mail, and there's three parts that the mail is built off. It's just a text message, which say, oh yeah, why don't you come back? There is forum content that is not yet read by the user, and there is unread, unread learning material, so video material. And we've done this in a multivariant setup. So we had um, the four groups, which received different combinations of these three building blocks. 
Um, so we not only wanted to see if this works or what we also wanted to understand what are the, like what is the content that drives the user back to the course. And this is like, this looks like um, in, in the UI and here are the, the numbers. And what you can see is um, that in those groups where we had video, there we, we could see a change of 40% uh, uh, for the overall visit count and a change of plus 70% um, on, on the video visit. So we also could see that uh, questions alone are, are not working. So all these people who say, oh, the social part of a MOOC is, is very important. Um, what we could show here is it's a content-driven thing for most of the users, obviously. Um, so what we've done is, um, for example, we reordered the final layout and made videos first and, and not the social content. And the third use case I'm going to show is a reminder mail. So similar use case, but this time only um, social content. Um, and, and we have here um, normal discussions and questions, like our forum is separated in, in discussions and questions. And there we hoped to increase the uh, activity in the social part. What you can see here is um, the people who received the digest mail, um, they had an, an, an increase um, also with a high confidence here. So this also seems to work. W one thing we learned or is that while these are positive metrics, we still here in this setup had no idea of if there are any negative impacts. So for example, if we send out more and more mails out to the user, this may lead to, I don't know, uh, unsubscribe all the mails or just like feeling that there's like a spammy platform. Um, some additional remarks and, and learnings from, from the three use cases. Um, we've run some of the tests on, on the platform where SAP is the shareholder. Um, remember the Amazon story where the management board was very afraid of, of changing things and, and while uh, OpenSAP is an, is an experiment and we try to figure out if MOOCs are going to work in an enterprise context, um, we also face that um, we have to really good communicate to the stakeholders what's, what's the impact of a test. So what, what is, you see here is like, um, what is the, why, why do we do the test? So what is our idea? What, is, what, do, we, what do we expect to change? Um, how long is does it gonna run? How does it gonna look like? For example, here is a um, test where we change the display of the forum. So this is something which, um, have a good communication what is going to happen and have real-time view of this is actually the, um, the effect on the user it seems to be um, important of, of using this large scale. We also defined a release workflow based on that. So every new major feature um, we're gonna roll out in, in, in the A-B test. Um, then we're gonna review the results and based on that we have discussion so there's no automatism that we say, okay, if like there's good uh, metric change, we're gonna roll out. We still discuss it in a team of experts and then we decide for, okay, this is good. This has a positive effect. We're gonna roll it out and activate it as default. Um, we might not roll it out as well if there is a negative um, impact or if it's like kind of fuzzy and there is some change but it's not really significant or it's like not as high as we expected. We might roll it out, but deactivate it, so keep it up to the user if you wanna use uh, the digest mail, for example. That's something which is there, but is not activated because um, this is something where the, the effect was not as large as we thought. Um, another limitation we, we saw with using A-B testing is that the, the metric um, still needs some interpretation by humans. Um, this is an example uh, down here. We, have an, uh, we made a test where in the forum we had two groups 
Every group saw the title, but uh, the one group also saw a teaser of the text. And the assumption was giving you more information about the threat will help you to get more engaged in the course and you will find more interesting content uh, that might be relevant because we saw that uh, many of the titles not been very descriptive to what was in the content of the thread. And we rolled this out. While this is uh, like not a high change at all, you can see that it's a negative change. So um, th those users who saw the teaser text, they've been uh, visited less threads. So this, but this could also mean that they only viewed the threads that are relevant for them. So actually I have no idea if this is like good or not or if I'm going to display the teaser line or, or not. So this is something where I, I keep it up to the user or I have to do additional survey. Um, so there's also the, uh, um, you have to really think about um, what, what's the meaning of, of the data you will see. There's also things you can't measure by a computed metric. Um, let's say the beauty of a page. Um, for that, we came up with this micro survey. This might be just like plus or, or minus, so like I like it, I like it not, or like a star rating. And this could be something where you could um, have data based on, on the user feedback. So display uh, this one when we rolled out the new version of the course list. Um, the old list was a list view, the new one was a crit view, and we had intense discussions what be, should be the default uh, of the page, and, and some of the users have been used to the old one, others like the crit view because they were familiar with other MOOC providers, and so this could be something where you could um, also find out what could be a good preset. Um, also, for some of the features which are just too big, we were afraid to use A-B testing. So this is a feature, um, the platform-wide gamifications. Uh, so badges, and this is not course-wide, this is platform-wide, and this has a huge impact. You're gonna see experience points in the edge, you're gonna get message as soon as a, a badge is granted. And um, in MOOCs, you have a lot of social communication in between the participants. Um, and so there we've been afraid that while you roll out this cool feature that many users might like, other users might feel like disadvantaged by them having not the feature. So even if you would put it like beta or test group or something, there's something where we decided um, to, to just not roll it out um, in an A-B test. Um, so conclusion. Um, what we showed is A-B testing works really well um, to give us control and, and work on the existing analytics data to decide what features are helpful for the learning experience, for the learning journey. Um, we feel more safe um, and can really put discussions from an emotional um, level onto a data-based level. Um, what we're going to do next is uh, we extend the, the list of metrics. We have another 50 metrics which we used in uh, clustering research, um, which we're gonna move also to the A-B testing. And for example, one of the next two tests we're gonna drive is, is onboarding. You saw that onboarding, we could see some increase, but there also uh, we're gonna test um, tour-based onboarding versus video-based onboarding versus mail-based onboarding. Uh, and also um, different mail layout for the communication for the users. So let me um, use my last 30 seconds um, for let you know that if you have ideas for experiments and you have a look at our platform, you think, I think based on my research or my experience, if you would change this feature to work so and so, um, please contact me um, and we're, I'm happy to do experiments also with, with your ideas based on our users and our platform. So that's it. <laughs> Questions? Um, so this is not about how to make people learn better, to test when they learn better, but about uh, user experience. Could you imagine how to, how you could relate this to I imagine the ultimate goal is to make people learn better. 
Yeah, we, some of the new metrics, for example, is um, how, you, how you create in the self-test and the credit tests are. So this could be some simple way of, of combining this with uh, learning outcome. Um, these are actually some of the next metrics. Um, also, the, so my, my major issue that um, how, to measure good, how to measure good learning, like does a good self-test say that you have a good experience? Um, do we have to go back to, to metrics? There's, I don't know, I'm, I'm open for ideas. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, so we've got some, some, actually the, also in the list of the first uh, metrics uh, course points was in there, so this would be the, the final, final crate of the course. Uh, I didn't put it in the slides because um, the tests we've done here had no major impact on the uh, course points. So they had, um, they led to more activity and this also, more activity we know led to better, um, better chance to pass the course but significantly the amount of points to the tests we've done uh, hasn't had no significant impact, but um, also there we can do more, uh, or we have to do more, more research. And I think the great thing about MOOCs is we have lots of data. We have like 10,000 users in average in, in every of the courses. So every, coach, uh, every course alone has the critical mass to do uh, one, one of these tests each and, and find an agile while to, to improve um, for, for both sides, course providers and, and learners. I, I should add that once a fall, so every week uh, learning and learning, that will be two kinds of projects. One thing will be individual learning, but the second thing will be the interesting one, the interesting test. So if we can utilize the, the data carefully, then so that we can have some information for which part or the or what 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 portion of Okay, so something like break down the metrics to certain parts of the of the content. Yeah. Good idea. Like it. So I I've got a question. Is there anybody? I know there's people from edX in the course center. Is there is there anybody from edX or Coursera here? Not too bad. <laughs> um, because I they both have A/B testing, which I'm new to with my research group. Is there I know it's metrics, but if somebody who's running A/B tests in these platforms on our MOOCs in Michigan, this, this would be a wonderful uh, sort of platform to be doing. Uh, we do a lot of looking at A-B tests for measuring learning and how feedback turns to um, drop, uh, causes uh, engagement drop-off if somebody doesn't finish the course or, or actually do all the units. If they haven't watched the content, they haven't engaged. Um, and so I really think this is very timely and very important. MOOC is, MOOCs are allowing us to change Data science or um, learning sciences a little bit, or change perspective um, to adding elements that are more traditional learning skill sciences that we find or um, experiments that we might find in the bachelor sciences. So I think this is very uh, timely work, and I'm, I'm pleased that you were able to share. Thanks. So we continuously test, uh, and effectively, all our new MOOCs or older or uh, similar uh, content. So then, is this also is this okay? Or okay, so I think there's lots of ethical conundrums, but there I think there's uh, the big uh, a big ethical question that hasn't been answered is um, why we just keep doing it the way we're used to doing it, or why we use theory alone. Why are we use theory and data light to to do it? So I think that there's like a I mean that's a, a rabbit hole of a discussion. <laughs> uh, certainly in my books, I think it's unethical not to. Um, 
Well, but the, the mountain of Burma has any situation. But uh, it may be not spiritual, but there could be, there should be some kind of an issue, mental issue, but uh, doing or not doing. And all that stuff. I mean, we normally, I mean, in, in the US, we generally rely on, on higher beings. So what well, right, 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 right. is reason for questioning who they are um, before that maybe gets it out in the light, you know, give us a little bit clearer word and see what <laughs> could be important. That would probably be yeah. so Of, of what? Yeah, yeah. W what we've got is like, um, no, there's no formal process for that. What we've done is like having this uh, this report sheet, which we hand over to to the uh, to our partners if we run on their platform. Um, but also, I think the the impact of the tests we've done so far, um, like you receive an additional mail or not, or you have some feature or not, and also there we if the feature was like really, so the, you could disable the mail. In, in the mail actually we said, you're part of, it, of, of a test. Um, and we, we made it uh, disable, uh, disable, is that a word? Um, yeah, and, 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 and you saw for example on the, uh, so there, there might be some, some things which you're not gonna change, so I don't know, not displaying some content um, to, to see if some content is important. That is something which we probably would not do um, without like an, an explicit opt-in for like, I'm, I'm crazy, let me do crazy A-B testing stuff by the user. No, we, we could access, uh, like the uh, user, on average user on uh, our platform has like three courses which we took on the platform, so we could take into consideration data from old courses and, and then the new course or something. This is something where we would have the data, um, at, at least for those users who have uh, done several courses. No, no. They, they might see if it's like a mail that we might have put in there. Uh, you see this because this is a new feature we're testing and feel free to disable it there and there. Um, so but there's... Do you know that like today has a, a, a record of, do you have a record of each test that is being done for each of those? Yeah, tests? yeah. And, and do you pay to and anticipate any kind of issues when you need to enroll in new courses and that the entire course is being yeah, that's, that's what I said, the, the, the most used filter feature is just uh, having users on their first enrollment to, to, to minimize that, that effect. But this is also something which where I think you have to uh, differentiate between test and test. So if it's like displaying additional uh, abstract line in, in the forum, poo, why, why not? Um, if it's something which, I don't know, cost time for the user, double rethink it. No, no, I think that's, that's um, on average number of enrollments on, on the platform is something like 2,000. So this is enough to run a small, small test. If it's, what, what you have to think about, there are some tests which are only affecting certain parts of the platform. For example, um, if you do tests in the forum and you care about active forum contribution, we know in MOOCs that only a small percentage of users normally contribute actively in the forum. So this is something where um, you might need a larger sample or you should pick the people uh, which you put into the sample as late as possible. So if they really like somehow engage in the forum and then make the decision, then th th there might be areas when it's getting more critical in terms of finding the, the right amount of users. The filtering is quite nice. So often I'll want to run an experiment on a specific geographic group and I have to make that A-B experiment for my whole group. And when it gets close to like a you know, distributed group for that, right? I can target in on that. Then there's no one multiple independent experiment on the same group in the same app. And that's one of the challenges with, with doing A-B tests right now in the, in the wild and things like this. But clearly, 
one population that you need to get one student in the school. Yeah. Actually, we, we could because we also know if the user is part of another test, yeah. so we could filter out those users that are part of an active test. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.